What is up everyone and welcome to the 10th episode of the MMA Tech Podcast. Um, holy shit, yeah, I have fucking disappeared. I went off the face of the earth. I know, I know, I know. I know there hasn't been a podcast for fucking ages. So I do apologise, but um, <clears throat> legit, you know, it was just a case of taking a bit of a break, sorting some stuff out, I'm coming back. Um, way better. Let's be honest, in terms of UFC-wise, I didn't really miss much. I only really missed out... You know, I really want to cover the um, UFC, uh, I can't remember, what, what was it, like 223, 224, whatever the fuck it was. Uh, Cody Garber and TJ did a show. I know I wanted to cover that. I didn't get the chance to, so I do legit apologise for that. I did want to cover it. But, you know, it was just one of those things, need some time off. You know, the last podcast I uploaded was the 2nd of June, so fuck me, I apologise. <laughs> but nah. We're back now. Just let everyone know. I don't want to like talk too much bullshit for too long because I do just want this podcast to start, man. But yeah, we're back properly now. This is gonna be a bit of a shorter episode. You know, we'll be reviewing UFC Fight Night One Three Five, uh, which was uh, Justin Gaethje versus James Vick in Nebraska. Decent fight card. Uh, we've got a bit of news to talk about uh, and all the shit that I've missed. I know there's been so much news. You know, so many fights being announced and all that, and I'm sorry I missed that all that. But if you guys want to hear my opinion, um, when those fights actually happen, I'll just break them down more. Then I know when the fights get announced, I give you know my first analysis and on what I kind of feeling and stuff. But um, yeah, this time just all the ones that I've missed, and obviously the notable one, Conor McGregor with K- Khabib. They, you know, we got. In a week's time, I think we've got like fucking Darren Till and Torrin Woodley and, and stuff like that. So I'll be breaking all those down more nearer the time. Um, but yeah, for now, it's just going to be a nice short episode, like 20 minutes or so. Uh, just getting back into groove of things. Hopefully I don't sound a bit too weird. Um, but yeah, the love and the support that we got on UFC 226, Miocic versus Cormier. You know, we, the Spotify listeners, you lot have been fucking killing it. I want to thank you all for... If you listen to us on Spotify right now, I just appreciate it so much, man. The numbers have been scarily like, wow, what the fuck? Like, out of nowhere. So, thank you all. I'm back now. We're going to be on it. And, uh, yo, let's just get fucking cracking. I have missed doing this. So, yeah, let's go. So, first things first, UFC Nebraska. First, I'm just going to talk about the main event first. Um, like, oh, <coughs> don't get me wrong. I am a Justin Gaethje fan, right, I, I, I really am a Justin Gaethje fan, man, like, he is one of my favourite fighters, I watched him when he was in, um, World Series fighting, you know, I just heard about this guy that's just a fucking beast, and undefeated, I was like, you know what, okay, let me fucking check this out, and, so, I'm just a big Gaethje fan, I, I, I low key, I was like, you know what, He's had two big, big fucking losses now. One to Poirier, one to Eddie Alvarez. If he does lose this next one to James Vick, fuck, he's gonna be. It's gonna be an uphill battle. Um, you know, he's he said many occasions he's only got what four, four or well, five fights, uh, and that would be four um, left in him. So and then he's looking to just completely retire and call it a day, which thank God because his fighting style is fucking scary. But uh, he's just. He's just one of those fighters that you love to you, you love to watch, man. He's just fucking ball to the wall every time. So I was rooting for him. But James Vick has probably been that one UFC fighter that has been on a fucking tear in a stacked division. And they have just struggled to make a name out of this kid. And I say kid, you know, he's 31 years old. In terms of UFC, that's kind of his prime age, you know, 29 to 30 two-ish, maybe even 33, that's your prime in UFC, for some reason, for MMA fighters, they end up peaking during those years, it's so weird, but, you know, going into this fight, uh, James Vickers, you know, 12 and, and, and 1, so 12 wins, 1 losses, I want to say the only loss he had in the UFC, yeah, the only loss he had, had in the UFC, was against, it was against Benil Darius, and that was the UFC 199, so, you know, a while ago, you're looking at mid-2016 there for his last pass loss. And then, you know, went on a four-fight winning streak and then finally got Justin Gaethje. But, you know, it, if you look at his just splitting up his wins, right? In the UFC alone, he's got 
guillotine choke. Uh, another guillotine choke. Um, another guillotine. Uh, another submission. Uh, knock TKO punches, TKO punches, and then a few decisions. So he got a mix between a few decisions and then a lot of submissions. But recently he's been knocking his opponents out within the first or second round. So you know he's been going in. So this was really his opportunity to put his fucking name out there. You know, main event on a UFC fight card. Plus they you know had it wasn't the best of cards and it wasn't promoted anywhere. But what it what is nowadays really. Nothing ever gets promoted properly by the UFC. It's a fucking shame. But, you know, this is his chance to get on a main card, get some people looking at him going, fucking hell, you know what, this kid is, he'll be a tear in a year or two. But, you know, he could still be. But when you get knocked out in the first one and a half minutes of the first round, there's not much you can say. You you just get clipped. And I think that's all the case if it was, you know, just just going for the fights. Just going through the fight. Um, I had, like, slight note, notes, like, so... You, Straight away, I noticed that, you know, James Vick was looking to keep the distance, obviously, because Justin Gaethje has fucking clear-cut knockout power. That's it fucking was shown, but, you know, James Vick is fucking, you know, those kicks are rangy, man. He can really distance his sort of foot from the opponent with those kicks. So, you know, he saw, you saw him kind of doing that within the first minute, you know. Establishing the distance with the kick, keeping Justin Getchy away from it at all times. If he does come in, slip him and you know catch him. It looked like that was going to be the situation, either one or two ways: catch him with a counter or wear him out with these vicious leg kicks to the, the to the knees and body at uh, knees, the legs and the body. Sorry, wearing out Getchy. You know, it's a five round fight. Take him into the later rounds and finish him there. Which, let's be honest, you know. When James, uh, James, sorry, when Justin Gaethje is fighting on the empty gas tank, you know, he got finished by Poirier when he was looking completely shattered and, you know, obviously that, that loss to Eddie Alvarez, he was completely drained, you know, they were both just fucking slopping all over each other and, and then, you know, that big knee landed from Alvarez and that was the end of the night. But all in all, you know, during the fight, you know, it, it looked like, that was going to work for James Vick. And it looked like it was working for a few minutes. And then all of a sudden, you know, um, it, you know, all of a sudden, you know, Gaethje gets, gets close. You know, he got that, he got that little bit close before the knockout punch. There was a little exchange where, you know, Gaethje gets close. I believe like he hit through a left to the stomach. Um, then, but like, as soon as he put, kept pulled out, you know, he got caught with the kick again. You're thinking, okay, you know what, and then Getchy goes, closes the gap and goes for a kick, clinch, and Vic hits him with a, like a horrible knee to the body. You're like, okay, you know what, Vic's doing a great job here. Anytime he's coming close, he's hitting him with big, big, big shots of the body, making that body feel heavy, tiring him out. He'll be taking a lot of pain. So as soon as they get split up from that little exchange of the knee to the body, it must have just woken something up in Getchy. He was like, you know what, fuck this, and just... Boom, right up to the face, and it literally just turned him. That was a horrible knockout. Vic was on the floor for ages. Even when fucking Justin Getchy went to go say, you know, you know, shake hands after the fight, he went to double leg him, like, for fuck's sake. Like, he was that out of it. He was completely fucked out of it. Decent main event for the one minute and 27 seconds of it. You know, it's always nice to have a, a big knockout, I suppose. It's always entertaining on that aspect, but, um, James Vick, I don't think this uh, this loss is going to hurt James Vick too much. As dumb as that sounds, you know, it was James Vick's first real big test. And, you know, if I just quickly, you know what? Let me whack up the UFC rankings, right? Because I want to say Vick is ranked in the top 10. And I'm sure he is. Um, rankings... Right, uh, da, 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 lightweight, yeah, he's 10th, so, if you look, you know, Nate Diaz is behind him, Michael Chiesa is behind him, Dan Hooker is in 14th, so, I'll tell you one thing, I'd love to see James Vick versus Dan Hooker, that would be a fucking ridiculous fight, holy shit, uh, yeah, that would be, oh, oh my god, I want to see that fight now, um, the lightweight division, you know, in terms of what's in front of James Vick, 
you know, he could... I'd, he has been going under the radar, do not get me wrong. He's been racking up these wins, like, ridiculously against OK opposition. But, let's be honest, Justin Gaethje was his first big, big test this in this period of his, his career. And, you know, to get knocked out like that, it's going to fucking not sit exactly right, is it, after taking a big knockout like that. You know, look at Alo Quinta. That's going to be a, a bit of a struggle, tough fight there. Edson, and then, you know, you're looking at everyone else in the top 10. Edson, Barboza, Kevin Lee. You know, there's no point putting him against them. If I'd do anything, I'd love to see James Vick versus Chiesa or James Vick versus Hooker. One of those two would be a perfect for him to, to go next and see. Where, if he can just stay at that 10th position, knock off anyone who's behind him because Chiesa's ranked 12, Hooker's 14. So, yeah. 100% that's the, that has to be the way forward for, for Vic and hopefully he does bounce back because he is he's deserving of being up there in the top 10 it's it's just whether he can break it and, and, and go into you know potentially top 5, 6, 7 we'll see um, in terms of Gaethje now now these aren't I don't think these have been done as of right now I think these are sort of the old rankings before the fight so before the fight started Justin Gaethje was 7th um, and I, I, there was just, I saw something on Instagram where, uh, it was one of Justin Getchy's photos and then, um, Kevin Lee posted on it, loads of money signs, the money little emoji with the tongue out and the dollars for eye signs. <laughs> that has to be the next fight. Yeah. Justin Getchy ranked seventh, Kevin Lee fifth, do it. Kevin Lee's not no one to fight at the moment. You know, he, th he wants this 165 fan division. It's not going to happen. Um, when we talk about the news later on, I don't want to talk about it too much, but, um, you know, Ke Tony Ferguson's got a fight, you know, just I'm just going to go through the top five, right, in the lightweight division. Kevin Lee has not got a fight. Eddie Alvarez has not got a fight, but I believe he's injured. I'm sure he's, re like, recovering off an injury. No, wait. Aren't we getting Dustin Poirier Eddie Alvarez too? Oh, no, we're not, aren't we? Didn't we just have that? Didn't we just... Oh. Maybe not then. No, oh, no, fucking, of course. We've got Justin Poirier and Nate Diaz. Has Eddie Alvarez got one? I don't think Eddie Alvarez has got a fight. I'm sure he's injured. Um, Yeah. Yeah, after that lost... Since he lost to Justin Poirier in mid-July... or end of July, so... Shit, only a month ago, to be fair... Um, so, okay, then, well, Eddie Alvarez just fought, okay. Um, so, looking at the rankings, you know, get, uh, obviously, Kevin Lee, fifth, he's got no one to fight, you know. Alvarez just fought and lost, I'm sure he's injured. Poirier's got Diaz, Ferguson's got Pettis, Conor McGregor and Khabib obviously paired up. It makes sense for the Kevin Lee, just to get to your fight, and if they, you might as well just whack it. Um, end of year, end of the year, fucking hell, what a, what a nice card. That could end up being, you know, with some of the rumoured fights that they got coming up. Ooh, it is going to be looking nice. Now, I don't want to break this next fight down too much. But it was just, it was the co-main event, right? And it was um, Michael Johnson versus Andre Tucci Feely. What the fuck? Okay, what, what the fuck is going on with this? It, it, it's just, this UFC frustrates me so badly sometimes, you know. Official result, right? Michael Johnson defeated... Andre Feely via split decision, right? Now, these are the judges' scorecards. What the fuck? Okay, so Michael Johnson got the win, right? So, the first judge gave it 29-28 to Johnson. The second judge gave it 27-30 to Andre Feely. And then the uh, third, ju third judge gave it 29-28, right? To, to Johnson, obviously. Right, I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to break it down moment by moment, right? First fight, first round, sorry, 100% 10-9 Feely. Blatantly obvious. I'm sorry, it just fucking is. Second round, again, Andre Feely, 10-9. I don't need to explain myself. It was so blatantly obvious, it's fucking a shit show. Third round, that's the only round I would give Michael Johnson. One of the judges gave him, gave Andre Feely all of the fucking rounds. I wouldn't agree with that. I'd give, I'd, I would give the third round to, to, to Johnson. 
Andre Friedrich's got fucked out of this fight big, big time. Um, I legit feel sorry for him, you know. Um, just looking at the fucking, let's have a look at, you know, just their past. Andre Feeling now, what, 18 and 6, you know, he just beat Dennis Bermudez, Artem, no Artem Lobov. I feel sorry for him because, let's be honest, you know, he's a, he's a decent fighter. To, um, Andre Touch, I keep calling him Touch Feeling just because it's probably one of my favourite nicknames in the UFC. That's why I know so much about him. Um, you know, ugh, fucking, and then, I don't want to be a dick, yeah. I don't want to be a dick, but Michael Johnson really didn't deserve that that win. He really didn't, and fucking hell, you know what? If you're looking at his past one, two, three, four, five, six fights, right? Before this Andre Feely fight, his past six was a loss to Benil Darius, a loss to Nate Diaz, a win over Dustin Poirier, and then three consecutive losses to Khabib, Justin Gaethje, and Darren Elkins. Holy shit. That is just some fucking... I'm sorry, that's just some luck, man. That really is some luck. I don't want to talk about it too much because it fucking annoys me, but Michael Johnson, you lucky shit, man. You really are one lucky bastard. Um, but yeah, there's there, there's there's my re recap of, uh, of um, UFC Fight Night 135. Uh, Gaethje versus... Um, I'm losing my head, sorry, Gaethje versus James Vick. Um, now to some news right now. <sighs> Obviously, not a shitload of news because I'm still trying to figure out what came out in these past few days and, and what hasn't, but um, the one, I've got one big piece of news and then everything else is fight announcements and fight fight announcements or fight rumours. I'm gonna, first going to start with this big piece of news. So, um, Khabib's uh, coach, everyone knows who Javier Mendes is, you know, coaches fucking Khabib, uh, Luke Rockhold, uh, fucking DC, all the bastards, all of them get coached by Javier Mendes. I want to say he's, he's either the head coach or one of the head coaches at AKA. So, um, Javier Mendes was t talking to, I don't know who he's, oh, he's talking to MMA fighting, right? He's talking to all my MMA fighting and, um, he said some pretty interesting things. Now, first thing he said was, just some bullet points, right? So, Javier Mendes said, McGregor has one of the best stand-ups in the UFC. Uh, he's a master in, in you know, in that uh, respect. Um, he's also got a very good crown game. He's good everywhere. Um, he also said, there is no amount of time that we have got that's going to help us try to get Khabib's Khabib stand-up up to the level of uh, Conor McGregor's. Um, so, he goes... No way on earth is Khabib going to stand up with McGregor. He also came out saying that we have to fight to our strengths. We have to find ways to open doors where his weaknesses are, like the floor and classic uh, grappler versus striker fight. Um, but then he goes, you know, keep you know, keeping in mind that, you know, Conor McGregor has his fair share of grappling. You know, he's not the worst grappler in the world. He's not fucking Francis Ngannou level fucking... Grappler, you know, he, he can handle himself. He didn't say that, by the way. That was me adding that on the back. You know, I don't want him throwing fucking shade at Could be fucking whatever his name is. I'm throwing it. But, um, the, you know, the closing statement here was, we're the better grappler. He's a better striker. It doesn't mean we won't strike. It just means he's better about who plays whose game. Now, this is pretty interesting because it just clarified to me that Khabib's going in there with one mindset, 100%. He is going to go in there and go for the double leg straight away. <sighs> it is just a case of, is he going to get clipped? Now, I'm going to save this this little quote until I fully break down that. And that episode is going to be so long. Um, like I said, I'm working on a lot of new things at the moment. And I'm hoping, in terms of the video aspect of the, of the podcast, to um, record... Like, um, Show some, I won't show clips because I don't want to get taken down, but I will be showing photos. Uh, and you know, if you've ever seen, like, um, what does Dan Hardy do with John Gooden? Something the Octagon, I can't remember what it's called. Something, something, something. And they break down the fight with, with you know, photos and the arrows and all that bullshit, highlighting different things. That's what I want to hopefully do. Um, I'm getting there either within this week or next week. I'm 
aiming to have this done, this little, it's just so random, I know, but just, I'm aiming to have it done by the uh, Darren Till fight. So that's next week, I'm going to be looking into it, seeing if we can figure it out. Um, and if I can, it's just a bonus. You know, help me break down stuff and show you guys what I'm actually talking about. I said, you guys just fucking imagining it. Uh, imagining it? I was imagining it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was the only big piece of news. And again, look forward to that next week. Um, but yeah, bit fucking went all over the place at the end there. But here's what it is. Right, next piece of news. Now, these are all... Um, I've got some confirmed ones and then some rumours. So the first rumour um, I want to talk about is um, the UFC card on ESPN. So this UFC card on ESPN is me. The first card on ESPN uh, is going to be January 18th, 2019. Um, and it's going to be, you know, it's fucking... The UFC and ESPN are obviously going to go balls to the wall. If you remember when the Fox deal came out, like a few years ago, it was like uh, JDS and Kane, I think. That card was ridiculous. It was stupid. It was like pay-per-view worthy, but... I feel like that's the same route they're going to do here. So the first thing that we have here is Paige Van Zandt versus Rachel Ostevich. Now, if you know who any of these two are, you know that this fight is going to be a boner fest. And I, I don't want to say that lightly or in a weird way, but holy shit, these two women are fucking gorgeous. And a lot of old men are going to be sitting, watching these fights with a pillow over their cock. Um, legit though. <laughs> um, not too much I want to break down about it. It's just a case of me, you know, um, getting out there, you know, Holy shit, yes. I don't want to talk about it too much because I'm getting a bit excited. Um, <laughs> um, the first, and then the other rumour for the same card. Now, this is going to be, holy fucking shit. So, the, the other rumour is for this card is that we are going to have Stephen motherfucking Wonderboy Thompson versus Robbie fucking Lawler. I can not wait. I beg this happens. I need this fight. You know, Lawler's ranked fifth. Thompson fourth in the world weight division, please. Right now, so um, in terms of Robbie Lawler, you know Lawler hasn't fight for a year, oh, almost a year. Long layoff. Uh, his last loss was to RDA uh, in December. Um, you know, since he lost to Tyrone Woodley, uh, he lost his belt. What was that July 2016? I think he lost his belt to Woodley. He's been one on one. That one win over Donald Cabosaroni, and then the loss to RDA. Um, and that was a fucking horrible loss to RDA. RDA beat the fucking living piss out of Robbie Lawler, which is just, how fucking dare you, man? That's Robbie fucking Lawler. Um, and then obviously you got Thompson coming off that weird loss to Darren, Darren Till. You know, there wasn't exactly a fucking, a lot going in that fight. And a lot of people said that should scare that a draw. And he should have won. And they should have won. Fucking, I don't know, but. All I know is that if this is the fight that they're looking to do, holy shit, it's going to be amazing. Um, uh, and yeah, so there's all the rumours, and now these are all confirmed. So the first thing uh, I want to confirm is, um, where is it, where is it, where is it? Uh, I'll, yeah, first thing I want to confirm, so um, UFC 228, which is, the, is it, oh, I think that's the, no, it's not the Khabib one, that's the one next week. So the one coming up next week, we were meant to have, and I can't believe this fight fell out. So uh, we were meant to have Zabi Nurmagomedov. It's not Nurmagomedov. Uh, sorry. Fucking hell, his name's not Zabi. <laughs> He's not Khabib's brother, I apologise. It is Zabi Magomed Sherapov. Uh, was meant to go against um, Yaya Rodriguez. Holy fuck. I and mean, then you remember the whole Yaya didn't want to take the fight. Yaya got cut by the UFC. Yeah, I said, all right, then let me go to Bellas Hall. He's going to go to Bellas Hall because he's still in contract with UFC. UFC were like, all right, then fucking hell, come back where you have to take the fight. He takes the fight, and now he's injured. So, you know, it looked like Zabit wasn't going to fight on that card. I was looking forward to this fight so much. Um, but no, they have brought in... I'm trying to find out this guy. Right. They've brought in... Um, what is this kid's name? Um... Oh, okay, so he's from the Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series. His name is Brandon Davis. Uh, he'll be taking the fight on 11 days' notice. Um, Davis is 9-4 and four in his MMA career and 2-2 two and two in the UFC. He joined the UFC roster last year after he won a contract on Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series. Uh, he beat Austin Arnett in a dis uh, decision. 
Um, yeah, just not the most decorated fight. And I feel like it was just a case of who wants to get beaten up by Zabit. Uh, Zabit. Oh, fuckface over there. They know what? Yeah, yeah. Come on, you you get your ass beat. Um, and uh, and 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 yeah, you get your ass beat. And uh, at least we got a fight. So yeah, I, I really was looking forward to breaking down the fucking fight too. You know, Yair and, and Zabit, but it's what it is. Shit happens, and he's got to fucking deal with it. Right next, uh, yeah, the final piece of news that we have for today. I kind of did talk about it a bit earlier. Um, it is Tony Ferguson versus Anthony Pettis for UFC 229, which is the Conor McGregor versus um, Khabib fight. So it's pretty obvious that whoever wins between Ferguson and Pettis will be getting that next fight. Obviously, you know, amid all the rumours about GSP fighting the winner of the Khabib and Conor fight, but who knows what's going to happen there. But if they're putting Ferguson and Pettis on this one, it could be in case there's any weight cut or, you know, anything, anyone drops out. I think it's pretty safe to say that, okay, you know what, they'll be like, you know what, someone drops out, don't worry about it. We've got this. We've got, we'll get a backup. Don't worry. I think that's the case. So. Again, a good idea, but I also think this is a number one contendership for, you know, Pettis ranked uh, eighth, Ferguson second. Again, it's kind of just really two people that were ready to bang, really. You know, Ferguson coming off that uh, weird injury when he fell over the cable and fucking tore his knee open or whatever the fuck he did. And um, you got Pettis coming off a second round submission um, win, I believe it was, against Michael Chiesa in UFC 226 in July. So, again, only a month ago. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I again, obviously I, I 100% see this happening, you know, with the whole, t- you know, whoever wins the, between Ferguson and Pettis will get, um, the winner of the, the main event, which is deserved. I still really want to see either Ferguson and Khabib or Ferguson and, and Conor McGregor. So I'm looking forward to both of those fights, but yeah, that has been it for the 10th episode of the MMA Tech Podcast. I want to thank you for joining me. We're finally back. Um. Quick little announcements. This is just if people have even logged off by now. I don't know. But, yeah. Check out the podcast. We are everywhere at the moment. We're YouTube, uh, Google Play, iTunes, uh, Stitcher, Spotify. Thank you again to all the Spotify listeners. You lot have been killing it. Um, yeah. Uh, where else are we? Player FM. Hope it's just a shitload of places. Um, um, my Twitch is in the uh, description below as well. Go you know, subscribe to me over there, it's free, don't worry, uh, and come join some of my live streams, you know, we'll be doing a lot of uh, content on there, uh, even putting the podcast live at one point, again, just a case of figuring it all out, getting everything right, and then the podcast will be going live, so that'll be quite fun to do, um, what else is there, Twitch, uh, you know, tweet me at the MMA Take Podcast again, all that shit is in the description down below, wherever you're listening to this too, just click on the description of the podcast, it's there, all the links are there, Go follow us, tweet at me, any questions and, you know, I'll answer them either straight away or I'll put them back in the podcast and I'll answer them in the podcast. Um, Yeah, so check out all the YouTube stuff, you know, we've still got all the simulations, still got the career modes and the ultimate team. We're doing some stuff on Twitch too, all UFC related, obviously. Uh, and yeah, so this has been the 10th episode of the MMA Tech Podcast. I want to thank you for joining me. We're back, baby. Next week, I cannot fucking wait. I'll be breaking down next week episode UFC 2, 2, uh, 6 or 7, I don't know the fucking numbers anymore, but it is my boy from Liverpool, England, Darren Till, I've been looking forward to this fight for a few fucking weeks now, Darren Till going against Tyron Woodley for the belt, I fucking can't wait, I really, really, really can't wait, so I'll catch you all next week, cheers for tuning in.